There are some advantages of using simulations and there are in fact some disadva disadvantages as well. So what are these? The advantage of a simulation is that it can be really very general. It can be extremely general. So you can, in principle, simulate almost anything if you're willing to devote a lot of time and effort and, and, and uh, money to it. So that's one very good thing about it. Um, and we can study dynamic processes. We can study dynamic processes, in other words, not just the steady state as we typically do in queuing theory, but in fact how the system changes over every step in time. And finally, we don't need to model to in too much detail. We can, uh, we can have some parsimonious models, and I'll explain what this is in just a minute. Uh, but in other words, uh, I don't need to know exactly how every entity interacts with every other entity in great detail. Perhaps all I need to do is to explain how it interacts with its neighbors, and then the simulation model allows this entity, this interaction to traverse across multiple neighbors over time. So we just need to model the interaction with its immediate neighbors and not worry about this interaction with the whole system, and the simulation itself allows the Im Im uh, effects to propagate over time. On the other hand, there are some cons. So one of them is that debugging a simulator is actually quite difficult. How do you know what you're doing actually is correct? And v validating that the output of a simulation is correct is, uh, is often uh, quite challenging. Uh, and uh, it's a task that not too many people who do simulations spend too much time about uh, thinking about. They simply do the simulation and hope everything is okay, but uh, validation is uh, super important because otherwise the simulation results uh, are not going to be actually meaningful. The second thing is that generality leads to complexity. So often the simulation is, uh, the code is understandable only to the person who wrote it, and that makes it very hard to maintain uh, over time. It can be computationally expensive, as I already mentioned. It can be expensive in terms of time and in terms of computational power. And finally, unless you do very careful statistical analysis, the results are not going to be uh, very useful uh, because you are going to uh, have to make sure that any results that you get, for example, when you talked about these two simulation runs with these two values, should you do two runs? 20, 100, 1,000? When do you know you have enough simulations so that, so that the statistic, which is the, let's say, the mean rabbit population at time step t is uh, correct? Uh, uh, how do you know that you have done enough simulations? So these kinds of statistical analyses turned out to be quite complicated. And finally, of course, you have to remember it's only a model. So we are not actually, we don't actually have the real system. It's still a model. And so as, uh, as George Box said, all models are wrong and some models are useful. In the same way, all simulations are wrong and some simulations are useful. So simulations are helpful in developing intuition, in giving you some kind of a feel for the problem. It's very difficult, especially in discrete event simulations, to claim much more than that uh, or to say this exactly how things are going to be. This is in contrast to simulations of physical systems where we can, in general, uh, or sorry, in theory, be able to simulate the physical system in sufficient detail so that when you say that the wind turbines need to be laid out in a particular fashion, in fact, you do really think, you are fairly confident that this is what it's going to be in practice because you're modeling physical laws rather than uh, somewhat uh, simplified uh, models of the computer systems, underlying computer systems.